Hi guys, how are you? Um, I'm switching to video for now. I'm having great difficulties with that live streaming stuff. Uh, more condensed version. Basically, what we are seeing is that the market leaders are uh, fading. You're seeing the broader beaten up stocks outperform for now. What does that mean? It means the 401ks are probably going to look better. Because anything between the beaten up stocks to, to, to the market leaders are performing better. And then the market leaders, like the, the FANGs and NASDAQs, are having difficulties. Okay. Um, so why is that? Well, think about it. Are we in the second half of the stimulus or the first half of the stimulus? I would say at this point we're in the second half. We know it's coming, how fast it comes, how deep uh, stimulus is it going to be, uh, is going to matter. Okay? But it's the second, it's the, the, the ending 50% of the stimulus, I would say. So the expectations are high. The problem is that the more you print, the more you need to print. And if you don't keep on printing at the same rate, then you end up with the law of diminishing returns and you end up with something that you're seeing now. Okay. Vaccines. We've been beaten over the head for the past eight months. One day vaccine, the next day is stimulus. And one day is vaccine, the next day is stimulus. Vaccine, stimulus for eight months, which has helped propel the market to new all-time highs. You can't, you can't hand Wall Street $4 trillion and them not, you know, put it in the market. It's not possible. So the vaccine bar is now much higher. Uh, definitely good news, but there's, you know, a lot more to it than just saying, oh, vaccine is uh, to develop this 90%. We're going back to normal. No, 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 no. Not the way it works. So any kind of negative news from the vaccine front is going to be bad for the markets. Okay. So you got the stimulus at high expectations. You got the vaccine at high expectations. How about stocks? Look at the high expectations of stocks. We have been now uh, at this all time high. Uh, no, that's the wrong thing. Oops, wrong thing again. Okay, we've been at this new all-time high now for 77 days with no uh, price appreciation, only volatility. What does volatility mean? George Soros said it famously, volatility is a current of turning points. Okay, so fatigue is starting to set in. People want to see their investments grow. When it's going up and down 10, 12, 14, 15 percent, um, you know, it scares the bejesus out of people. So the expectations there are high. How about elections? We know who won. It's Biden. Okay. Is Trump going to leave? Don't know. Expectations are high that there will be a smooth transition. Maybe it won't be. Okay. So anything, the more that this garbage Trump uh, delays and complicates things, the worse it is. Take a look at the market leaders, fangs, expectations. Look at it. Head and shoulders. Not good. Not good. Okay, Apple is a $2 trillion dollar company, right? Microsoft is $1.6 trillion dollar company, right? We're reaching limits. In terms of price appreciation, we're right back where we were in July-ish, right? So fatigue. Taking a look at the coronavirus, right? Expectations was that we will be able to maintain it somehow or, or do whatever. Positivity rate now is at 10%. World Health Organization recommends that anything less than 10 is acceptable. Anything above that is not. Okay. Uh, it's not like we are 10% positivity rate uh, with 200,000 tests. It's a million. Okay, so there's an exponential kind of rise going on in positivity rate in cases. 
uh, deaths have been rising. They have been maintained, but at some point you got to think it's a lagging indicator. They're going to start to pop as well. Air travel. It's been flattening out. The growth rate has been very kind of shallow, right? It's flattening out. Um, that's not good. When it, it, You can't, I mean, how long would it, is this going to take to get back to normal? It's going to be a very long time, okay? So, yes, we have a vaccine. We know that the vaccine uh, effectiveness is, according to Pfizer, 90%, right? Uh, just to kind of go over everything. Right, we we know, we know when it's going to be available. We know what the effectiveness is, but when it's available, it doesn't mean that everybody can get it. Right, there's going to be 1.3 billion dosages, and from them, uh, you need two two shots, so that's 650 million. Okay, um, so we know the quantity that it's going to be manufactured. We need how, we know how many dosages are going to be. Uh, we're hoping that it's going to work in all mutations. Uh, but again, 650 million for 7 billion people, you know, it's not going to be over anytime soon, right? What are the side effects? Unknown. Unknown. Uh, how many people are willing to take it? According to the polls, not too many, okay? Uh, 50%, but again, it's not going to be available for 50% for 2021. Uh, how long is the effectiveness going to hold? Don't know. Right, unknown. Uh, we're going to need bo booster shots. You know, there's a lot of unknown. There's a lot. It's not as simple as oh, vaccine is created, let's go back to normal. It's not that simple. So we have a lot of high expectations, okay. And if anything comes out in the news that even questions any of these expectations, you're going to have difficulties in the market, okay. And that's why I suspect. We are seeing the market leaders topping out, while at the same time, the beaten up stocks, there's some hope, right? So they're going to reflect that hope. Uh, and uh, just to kind of not going through all the, the charts, uh, there's two distinct patterns that we're, we're seeing. The first pattern is topping and patterns. Okay, it can be, it can be just above it and down. It can be just below it, or just at it and down, or just below it and down. Okay, they're all valid. Okay, we also seeing head and shoulders, head and shoulders, top topping patterns and patterns are reversals, volatility reversal. Okay, so that's that's I'm going to clump them up into one type of market. All right, topping market, market leaders. Then I'm going to um, the second class of charts that I'm seeing is one to three ups. One to three up. One to three up. Okay. One to three ups end up forming structures that are bearish. Okay. While it's good that we're seeing these beaten up stocks go up and so forth, uh, it's not good because. Um, they're setting up, they've been beaten up so much that they're setting up that bearish structure. So um, let me give you uh, just a few examples. Okay, so this is the NASDAQ, right? This is the uh, S&P, okay, higher, higher low. I'm, so, I'm sorry, high, high, but back into structure, right? Uh, you look at the small cap, same thing, right? Now, if I show you something like the UK, what you're going to see is a one, a two, and a three. Okay. I don't know when this wave is going to end, but it's a one, two, three up. If I show you something like uh, jets, okay, you got a one, two, three up. It doesn't have to go much higher. If a wave three does not have to, you know, be like this, symmetrical, okay, and it's also double topping at the same time. All right. So this would be considered a one, two, three up, and then it goes down. So you, then you end up with something like this. It's a bearish structure. Okay. Now, if it starts to consolidate, starts to keep popping back up here and keeps building pressure, then in that case, it would be a bullish, uh, um, a bullish setup. 
but when you when you have something like this okay and then you kind of draw it out and there's so much void in here all right then the bias is to the downside so you end up with a one two three bearish structure down all right if i show you xlf okay from the bottom one two three all right bearish structure going up going to go down all right so this is what i mean uh, and of course you, you have a double top but this is not the double top at the top right meaning it's not all the way up here all right so you got the double top you got the follow through in the wave three doesn't have to go a whole hell of a lot higher all right and then you end up with this bigger topping pattern which is here and here all right and then you look at the the compass compass is down one two three up down simple so it's very um, uh, important to understand the two types of structures that we have they're both bearish looking for now if it changes tomorrow I will change my mind that it's that simple but for now this is what we're seeing let's go through the the fangs okay Facebook double top Amazon double top Apple double top Netflix double top Google higher but still double top Nvidia definitely a double top right um, Tesla double top Delta following through see it one two three follow through down compass here down all right and again of course you have the double top all right so quickly let's just kind of cover some of the um, uh, some of the structures of BKC all right bare knuckle charting you have the, the classic one two three up and then you have the one two three just below the previous high just above this the previous high okay or the symmetrical all right these are basic very very basic and the reverse of course is true okay for bottoms but we're not at the bottom or at the top so this is these are the the, the the structures and as you saw just now okay we have the higher right that's that's one and then you have the Nasdaq which is just below okay and then you have um, the higher again in small caps all right this part doesn't matter this part matters right. again just to reinforce it a little bit let's go through the fangs again just looking at it plainly all right Facebook lower high Amazon lower high Apple really lower high Netflix just at it Google higher high but it's still an M pattern and Nvidia is uh, at or slightly below previous highs and then you have Tesla all right so that's that's what what, what I what I mean all right uh, in terms of one two three up then you have this one right doesn't have to go all the way to the top doesn't doesn't have to be symmetrical as long as it breaks the previous high this is a one two three corrective you got double tops and then down all right you take a look at Southwest you got that one two three up right then you end up with this structure all right structures pointing up next move should be down the compass is here okay so keep all these things in mind practice uh, you know it would be great for me just to come out and tell you what well, this is going up this is going down you know and, and that's okay I can do that as well but for me it's more important that you understand the methodology of bare knuckle charting uh, that you understand how I do it why I do it um, so it's not it doesn't it doesn't appear to be well Nick just said that after the fact in a video uh, I, that, that's why I try to do the live streaming uh, because I want you to see me do it in, in real time that it's not bullshit okay it's dynamic it's not something that you know after the fact everybody's an expert believe me uh, you see them all these people all over the internet 
Unfortunately, I'm not a TV personality. I'm not somebody that's going to... Hi, who are you? Welcome. I, I can't do that. That's not me. <laughs> it's not my person. I don't have that gift. All right. But um, it's important for me that you understand the methodology. And, um, you know, hopefully I I can get the message uh, across. I can do it good enough to, to at least get the message across basically how I do things. And then that's good enough. All right. Um uh, again, the point of bare knuckle charting is to contrast it with macro. The macro and the bare knuckle charting uh, contrasting tells you a lot. For for example, we know that the market is doing nothing um, in terms of the economics fundamentals. Okay, but at the same time, we also know at a macro level that the stimulus has been a big part of why that is. Okay, so we are now in a market that is extremely volatile, and the only thing we really have to rely on, because the macro is not going to change a whole hell of a lot, is the short-term trading, right? Charting becomes paramount at this point, not only in terms of trying to trade something or not trade something, but in terms of trying to figure out where the market is headed next, right? Picking a top is the hardest uh, thing you can possibly do in in in, um, in in trading and investing. But reading the market as it appears right now, everything looks bearish. No doubt this can change tomorrow. No doubt the vaccine is good. No doubt that the beaten up stocks uh, are performing better than the leaders. This is good. This is good. But again, the message of the market is still bearish. The purpose of bare knuckle charting is not so much to read the waves and the structures and all this stuff. And it's not a crystal ball of telling us what the future is going to be. It's none of that stuff. The point of bare knuckle charting is to assess risk versus reward. Where do you want to take your trades? And in which direction generally do you want to take the trades? Sometimes you can take it long or you can take it short. It doesn't matter. It's up to you, right? But that's the point, right? Where is the risk reward? I don't see a good risk reward right now in the NASDAQ uh, in this setup. The, the setup right here is bearish. So what do I want to do? I want to short as high as I possibly can to the downside. That's what I want to do. Can I do that? No, I cannot do that right now. Why? Because I had a particle market that went straight up and a particle market coming straight back down. How many times did I complain that this is not good, not good, not good, not good? How many times? The whole entire time going up, I was complaining. Okay, now we're in a market that's going straight down. Still not good. You cannot shorten the hold. You're still in a particle market going straight down. Can you take trades? Yes. Are we looking for some kind of structure to set up at some point? Yes. And then we can take that nice uh, setup, that nice risk reward that's going to resolve to the downside. We need a structure that's going up. We need that. And then we know it's going up. It's going to resolve to the downside. Does it have to go to the downside? No, of course not. It can do whatever it wants. But I'm telling you, that's what we need. I also told you that we're reaching limits, anywhere between 10 and 14% are limits. When you're seeing weekly um, um, moves that are above 7% for the week in a day, that's a limit, okay? For the week, anything above 7%, it's a limit. And you saw that the, the market obeyed those limits. There's always limits to things, even though they look limitless. This, too, is part of bare knuckle charting, okay? Understanding how much are we up or down for the day. Is it 2%? If it's more than 2%, right, that's the normal extreme. Is it more than 7% up or down for the week? That's a, a normal extreme. In many ways, it's so simple. But if you don't adopt these rules, these understandings, they can become very complicated. If you start using candlesticks, if you start using RSIs, if you start trying to put MACDs and moving averages, you know, 
uh, you're going to get confused. You have to keep it pure. You have to keep it bare knuckle charting and understand. Okay. Uh, I know it's something different. I know it's not written in books. I know it's not. I know all these things, and that's why I'm in such a bad position in terms of conveying the information because I'm not a TV personality. Okay. But it's important to listen to the message of the market. It's important to go through all the indexes, forex, commodities, stocks. It's important, even real estate. It's important to understand the rules of um, bare knuckle charting. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I might do a, a live video later on today. Uh, I'm not going to give up on that because, again, I, I, people need to see me do this in real time. Um, it's the only way that I can convince anybody that this works. Okay, to see it in real time. If I can't point to it, then you shouldn't listen to me. It's that simple. And please don't forget to come down to patreon.com slash Rio Macro. Patreon.com slash Rio Macro. Come down and subscribe. 66, 63 cents a day. Or 66 or something. <coughs> All right. All right, guys. <coughs> Sorry. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.